500 different from the standard charger. How hot is the Hemi? Will the suspension system handle all that power? Well, these were just a few of the questions that our road test crew asked the day they wheeled a new cherry red Charger 500 onto our test track. This is obviously the car the Dodge Boys designed for Daytona. Most of the supercars we test fall in the intermediate class. But this big, full-size sedan tossed out some big surprises. This car would have to be placed somewhere at the top of the supercar ladder. During the time that we had the Charger 500, I couldn't help but ask myself where you draw the line. Where does the docility of a street machine end and the fury of a full-blown race car begin? That line seems to be getting narrower each year. And this Hemi Charger is right on the border. The exposed headlights mounted in the flush grille distinguish the 500 from the standard charger. Hood lines remain the same with the sculptured insert panels housing the directional indicators. To make this body a little slipperier for the super speedways, the stylists did away with the rear window tunneling effect in favor of the more aerodynamically correct fastback trend. Apparently at high speeds, a vacuum would form in the tunnel pocket, and on the high bank tracks in rebel country, this could mean two or three miles an hour extra. This charger, like the standard model, rides on a 117-inch wheelbase with a 59-and-a-half-inch front tracking width and 58-and-a-half in the rear. With this four-letter exciter hung on each side, you won't find too many takers at the traffic lights. This is one of the quickest ways I know of to do your thing. 426 cubic inches topped by hemispherical combustion chambers delivering 425 horsepower. That's about one horse per cube. And if that doesn't excite you, you better check your pulse. Accessibility to the trunk area leaves quite a bit to be desired on the standard charger. But on this 500, the opening is even smaller. One of the crew members asked, how come they put the glove compartment in the rear? The bucket seats, as in the past, are great. They give excellent support, and they're very comfortable, even on long trips. Leg room up front is plentiful. This, however, was not the case in the rear. The seating was all right, but you have to find some other place for your legs. But if you are uncomfortable in the rear, all you have to do is look at this beautiful dashboard and you forget all about it. No lights, all gauges. It makes the driver feel kind of necessary. And we still feel that this torque flight transmission is the best in the business. What a getaway car. 30 miles an hour in 2.8 seconds. It was going 45 miles an hour when we left the line. The clock said four seconds flat. The third time out of the hole, our driver accelerated a permanent smile on his face. He had 60 in 6.9 seconds, and that's fast enough to wipe the stripes off. With this street rubber, we had more wheel spin than a Las Vegas roulette table. Our best quarter mile goal was 14.1. For binders, we had discs up front with drums in the rear. From 30 miles an hour, it took 40 feet to stop. Pedal fade was about average. There was quite a bit of heat buildup, but those 11-inch discs up front dissipated it rapidly. From 45, we shut down in 71 feet. We tried about seven or eight 65 mile an hour panic stops. Our average stopping distance was 178 feet. After a work...
firing this car through a corner in a four-wheel drift with power on is a type of thrill that's not defined in your funk and wagnall. Whenever we'd drive it to our downtown offices, the parking lot attendants would move it every five minutes just for the fun of starting it. It only got seven miles to the gallon, and it was noisy. But the Charger 500 is the kind of car that quickens your pulse and puts a fire in your gut. And really, that's what supercars are all about. 